Hello, welcome to Hikate's Crossing. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Right, we're going to look at Oracle decks. This is my sort of next sort of little bit of a project that I want to do. I want to dive a little bit deeper into an Oracle deck and I'm going to use the Deep, Dark and Dangerous Oracle deck for this um, month. Okay. So I get this new Oracle deck in, I've played with it a little bit, but I really want to get into the nit nitty gritty of it all and really reflect on a card a day. Now what I want to do first is, the first thing you do is make sure you've got a journal, okay, or a blank notebook or something like that, and you're going to write in the name of the Oracle deck, okay, so we're going to write in deep dark and dangerous oracle okay so you're gonna write Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? So you're sort of writing the days of the week. And then what you're going to do is you can actually have a look at the guidebook. That's the first thing you do. You pull out the first seven cards, because you're just doing a week of cards, right? So you pull out the first seven and then you're going to read about the deck. Okay, so it's Deep, Dark and Dangerous Oracle by Stacey DeMarco, illustrated by Kinga Britschke. It's a rock pool deck. Everyone is a moon and has a dark side. He never shows to anybody by Mark Twain. Right, introduction about this oracle and then the name of the cards, which is split into three... Um, sort of categories the deep the dark and then the dangerous then it's got a little bit about the author and then the illustrator introduction okay so let's have a little bit a deeper dive into this deck introduction there is a profound beauty in the darkness the unseen the mysterious in a world where we think we know everything where the current paradigm of the world tells us that everything is brightly exposed with nothing unknown choosing To still remember that there is indeed some mystery remaining in the darkness is vital for our balance and harmony as humans. Our ancient ancestors knew this. Their mythos and stories are not just about love and light. They are often about darkness, fear, monsters, creatures of the unknown, and journeys into and out of the underworld. These are stories with a truth that has echoed down through millennia, warning us about poor behaviour, revenge, hubris, disrespect of the gods or the land itself, and simultaneously calling us to embrace our better natures and encouraging our resilience, courage, faith, restoration, loyalty and kindness. For some time now, especially in some aspects of the wellness and spiritual communities, there is a strange overcompensation where everything has to be all light, totally positive and irrevocably shining. There is a pressure to be wide, grinningly happy all the time. And even when we are sick or injured or traumatized, it is implied that somehow we invited this by not being positive enough. This toxic positivity, this reaching for an impossible perfection, and this quiet victim blaming, where exactly has this gotten us? I would lead us into more pain and confusion, guilt and suffering. One of the pioneers of analytical psychology, the famous psychoanalyst Carl Jung, once said, everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. What Jung is suggesting here is that we are not immediately conscious of the bits of ourselves we, name, we may not like or wish to show, Yet, they still show up and are active in our lives. Hiding them doesn't mean they go away. In fact, they can grow even stronger being ignored. So what can we do? The best thing is to make them more conscious, to seek them out, and, make e and maybe even to make friends with them. 
if we decide to seek or even engage with these unconscious aspects of ourselves, those darker shadows, these ill-formed, half-created, seemingly ugly monsters of our unconscious, perhaps we can refine them, perhaps even reshape them into something exquisitely useful and beautiful. Perhaps we could even grow to love them because they are the wholeness of who we actually are. What if the shadowy fear of rejection we harbour deep in the darkness can be transformed once we see it into the formation of a confident, discerning and independent self? What if the ball of self-hatred that lies within the stagnant dark waters can be undone and raveled and made new into a deep and unashamed appreciation of self? What if the anger that lies deep within the current of our mind and body, slipping through almost most everything can be met with curiosity and channel. The deep, dark and dangerous demons within us actually become the very things that make us successful and unique and whole. We can heal through shining a torch within the darkness or illuminate it. We can find our real and most empowered selves. Through journeying down into the unknown, cho choosing to go swimming in the deep, dark, deep waters, and walking the path in what may feel like the death-stalked atmosphere of the underworld. Remember, even the Bible speaks about walking through the shadows of death. Not actually death, but the shadow of death. Something that feels like death, yet we overcome it. This oracle deck was conceived and created around such ideas. To understand that as a sacred art to seek, find, play with, and even have conversations with the monsters in our unconscious. That the most pervasive or frightening of those of these thought forms sometimes is not as it may seem at first glance and that indeed there is duty to what it actually stands for. Each card explores this duty for it is a mighty aid to our wholeness. Each card features a deep, dark or dangerous entity and we explore its story and its message. I have also included a plant and a crystal association for those that may wish to do further workings around the theme of the subject. It is also important to add that some of these incredible creatures, deities and entities have stories whose meanings bear witness to and reflect modern events. We can see the mythos of Medusa and Cirque, for example, in a new light. We know that many monsters from ancient cultures just happen to be female. And according to the mythos, this is what happens when women overstep the lower societal place are required of their sex. This indeed is a shadow and a darkness in itself that we are currently illuminating and transforming in our society and wherever possible I have included this powerful work in this deck. The list of cards is roughly divided into the categories of deep, dark and dangerous, although plenty of the subjects are all three. Just for your interest though, I've defined deep as entities of either the deep sea, the deep unconscious or deep environments. Dark is those subjects whose realm is the dark places or the night itself. And finally, dangerous is for those entities that are indeed often out to get us. They're frightening and often deeply if we do not pay heed. I hope you allow yourself to do the work of the beautiful shadow and that the guidance and wisdom you receive is like a torch illuminating your path. Your path. Okay, about this oracle. How each card is structured. These are the following structural elements on each card. is the name of the subject of the card and the message of the card in summary. Duality, the often paradoxical themes of the card and the subject can be seen as light and shadow. The description, the plant companion, the plant that offers the essence and magic of the messages that you might wish to further use in your workings, and then the crystal companion, the crystal that offers the essence magic of the message you might wish to further use in your workings. Okay, if this deck is to be used for divination first, I suggest you dedicate or bless your cards. And there is a small ritual on page 10, if you don't already have one in mind. This enlivens the cards, enlivens the cards and connects you with the energy of the earth, the elements, the goodness of the dark and the intention of the deck itself. Second, spread the whole deck out on the table or the floor, or better still, the earth. Breathe deeply and relax. It allows your gaze to soften and see which card seems more attractive to you which ones jump out at you or call to you in some way. I call this the Pantheon Technique. Pantheon, path, Pantheon Technique. These may well be the aspects of the deck that you wish that you need to integrate into your life right now or the themes that can most assist you in your growth at this time. You'll be attracted to them and the card may almost jump into your hands. Pay attention to those cards and take action if it's indicated. One card, Divination. There's a Dark Moon 3 card drawer. 
the four element spread traditional seven card spread and there is a timing spread as well which we'll look at later i'm not going to do this. we've got the seven cards right so we've got depth which is shadow we've got freedom with the sulky we've got mystery with the kraken we've got treasure with dragon Warnings with the Kelpie, Acceptance with Hell, and card number seven is the Underworld with Hades. Okay, so they are the seven cards that we've got here. So let's have a look at these first seven cards. Okay. Okay, so these are the first seven cards that we're going to look at. Right, so I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the seven cards. Just shuffle them up. No particular order. Okay, I've got no idea on what order they are. So I'm going to pick out card number one. So let's have a look. Let's pick out card number one. For Monday, right. So I've got the dra- Whoops! Drop my journal. Right, so for Monday, I've got card number four, okay, and it's a deep card. Okay, so this is um, the dragon with treasure. Okay, card number two. with depth card number three hell with acceptance Freedom. We've got Kelpie with warning. Okay, card number seven, which is which is Hades with the underworld and then the last card we're going to look at for, for Sunday is three which is the Kraken and we've got mystery okay so that's the first seven cards right now the first card we're looking at here is card number four dragon so let's have a look at so that's the first card we're going to type up okay so let's have a look okay so I'm going to get very warm in here
right, so let's have a look at card number four. Oops. So let's have a read of this. Okay. Know what you treasure. Change is natural. Holding on to what is is an impossible long term. Protect what is important to you. Set proper boundaries and trouble may avoid you. Be strategic. Think ahead. Be brave. You can actually triumph if you try. The dual T is value of not a value. Hoarding and scarcity. Perhaps one of the most well-known creatures of the darkness across many world cultures is the, Japan, is the dragon. From ancient Sumeria, Japan, China, Korea, right across to Egypt and the Middle East, across Europe, through the Bible, and even Sufi poetry, all have dragon lore. While they may be described differently depending on where you are from, dragons almost always have a serpentine form a large tailed scaly and often live hidden in places like caves, deep pools or inside mountains. Asiatic and Middle Eastern dragons are the most like serpents, great serpents, sometimes with legs, sometimes without, and are often strategic and intelligent in their mythos. Chinese dragons are beautiful and are considered aligned with the element of rain and bringers of good fortune. The European dragon is off, most often winged, can breathe fire or spit venom, and has often been the target of heroes who kill them in order to win a prize, overcome something, complete a given task, or recover, or steal the dragon's hoard of treasure. It is this aspect of their mythos that is intriguing. Dragons can be seen as both gatekeepers and protectors of treasure. What is valued at the same time? Sometimes the dragon collects the shimmering gold and jewels for themselves simply because it is beautiful to them. Sometimes the treasure is being guarded for a purpose, good or bad. Yet the dragon must be overcome for the hero to be rewarded with some kind of, with some of the treasure. In the Norse sagas, there is a wonderful story of the hero who makes his money by working out various ways to sneak past sleeping dragons. <coughs> in the English, excuse me, in the English saga, Beowulf, Beowulf, a slave steals a single cup from a dragon's hoard, and the dragon knows of it and begins to raise the city around it. Beowulf takes twelve warriors with him to slay the dragon, but when they see it all but one runs, Beowulf battles the dragon, but his sword shatters and he is mortally injured. Both he and the dragon are dying. He tells the one warrior who stayed that he must bury the majority of the tra dragon's treasure, lest the cowardly soldiers come back to claim it, and he and the dragon die, both without the precious treasure. Both terrible and beautiful dragon magic is still strong today. So many films and games still mention dragons, and the motive appears on flags, for sports teams, and in popular culture everywhere. More likely now than ever, Dragons are increasingly seen as benevolent, intelligent, and often wronged by humans. Okay, so the, the plant, which we want to do a little bit more research on, is the orchid. And the crystal is emerald. Or gold okay so the dragon so when we're talking about treasure so we're talking about a reward for treasure finding what's of value to us at this time seems quite important so when we're looking at this dragon card here for Monday we're thinking about okay so we're thinking about what treasure do we have what's important to us what's of value to our journey or to our path or to our lives right now what's important to us what do we feel is really important what's our treasure what's a gift or something that we've rewarded ourselves with at this time what are we protecting you know what do we want to protect you know how do we create boundaries set boundaries in regard to this value seems quite important at this time so that's our first card
in this. And what I'm going to do is each day work on each card for me. And do a little bit of meditation, reflection. So I want to take a minute to just focus on this card for a minute. I just want to focus on this card. Just take a moment to breathe. And we're going to focus on this image of the dragon, of the treasure, the reward that we have for ourselves. How do we take this treasure? How do we gain this treasure? How does this treasure arrive on up in our journey? Okay, that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.